Well, hi, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to Catalyst Church, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, so you can see more videos like this. And if there's any way that we can help serve you with videos like this, or maybe you have questions, uh, please leave us a comment or send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Well, in this video series on spiritual disciplines, we're talking about kind of habits that help us grow in our walk with Christ or, or, or spiritual disciplines kind of growing in godliness. Today, I want to talk to you about meditation and memorization. Now, Psalm 119, 11 says, I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Paul writes to, to the New Testament believers and says that, that the word of Christ should dwell in us richly. We even see Jesus say in, in Matthew 12 that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so there's definitely a clear connection in the Bible between our lives and what we're setting in our hearts. And so one of the best ways that we can grow in godliness and train ourselves to look more like God is by hiding his word in our hearts. And we do this not just by reading, but by meditation and memorization. Now, any student will tell you that there's a huge difference between reading and studying, right? We can read a chapter over and over and over without understanding it. We could even memorize certain passages or certain words, right? I could tell you that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but I don't know what that means. And so when it comes to test day, I'm in trouble, right? And it's the same way with our Bible reading. If we fill our minds with knowledge about God and we listen to sermon after sermon, we read the entire Bible front to back but it never makes it into our hearts, then friends, we're missing out, right? We're missing out on a word of encouragement to a struggling brother or sister in Christ. We're, we're missing out on a weapon to fight against temptation or doubt when it comes our way. It's almost like we're going off to war, but we've left our sword at home. So friends, pick up your sword, hide God's word in your heart, bring it with you everywhere you go. Now, how do we do this? This sounds great, right? How do we meditate on scripture? How do we memorize scripture? When we hear the word meditation, probably a few images come to your mind. Maybe maybe uh, the image of a monk in, in lots of robes chanting to himself. Uh, maybe maybe you think of a yoga instructor who, who enters this new pose and says, Now clear your mind, let all the stress fall away, right? Or maybe we think of a really quiet spot in our house where we go to think, where we kind of clear the thoughts, kind of clear the clutter of our minds. Well, friends, when the Bible talks about meditation, it talks about not emptying our minds, but filling our minds. Right, we read about this man in Psalm 1 who meditates on God's word day and night. And so it's almost like when he wakes up in the morning, he's setting his mind on scripture. Before he goes to bed, he's setting his mind on scripture. So biblical meditation is filling our minds, not emptying it. And so what were we filling it with? Well, we're filling it with God's word. right? And so that's one of the ways that it moves from our head and into our heart. Now you might be saying, well, this is great. This sounds wonderful. How do I do this? How does this apply to my morning devotion? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's try it together. Psalm 119, verse 105. That's a pretty familiar verse to most of us. And here's what it says. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, one of the ways that we can meditate on scripture is just by emphasizing different words in the passage. So we might try and say, God, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There's lots of other voices in this world, but your word is a light to my is a light to my path. Or we might say, God, your word, and your word alone is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God, your word is a, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You you help guide me when I'm not sure where to go. Right, or we might rephrase it in our own words or think of an illustration that helps us explain it to someone. So we might say, you know, this book is not just uh, a lot of good sayings, but it's, it's kind of like my GPS. It's kind of like my instruction manual. So when I'm not sure about my place in this world or I wonder, God, where are you in all of this? This is where I turn. This is how I get back home. It's my GPS. Right? We might think of the Bible that way. Or we might illustrate it through, through art or through music. And just by setting our mind on this verse, we might create a piece of music or create a piece of art that kind of illustrates what we're talking about. God guiding us through his word. Right? There's no right or wrong way to meditate on God's word. That's the best part. So if you enjoy uh, walking through your neighborhood and enjoying God's creation and praying for your neighbors, then you can meditate on scripture while you do that. If you enjoy simply just uh, writing lots of notes as you read your Bible, you can do that and meditate on scripture, right? We can tailor this to however God has uniquely designed us. And so the important thing isn't how are you doing it? The important thing is, 
Are you meditating on scripture? Remember, it's, it's like a sword. Don't leave it at home. Now, the next way that we can hide God's word in our heart is by uh, memorization. Now, there's a lot of ways to memorize something, right? We could use flashcards. We could try to write it down without looking at it. Uh, we could try uh, mnemonic devices. There's, there's lots of ways that we can memorize something. That's not, that's not new to us. Uh, but friends, I grew up going to a program called Awanas, uh, and we memorized lots of verses every single week. Now, the danger with uh, memorization is that I found really quickly that I could just snap my fingers and I could tell you, uh, John 17, 17 says, uh, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth, but not really know what that meant. It's kind of like the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's memorized, but I don't necessarily know what it means. So friends, it's important that the ideas and the words of scripture are making it into our hearts. So maybe you're struggling with uh, memorizing scripture and that sounds a little scary to you. But friends, here's an easy place to start. Start by just picking a short passage of scripture. Maybe it's a psalm or a short saying of Jesus, like, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. And meditate on it, right? Write it down on a note card and take it with you. Think about it when you're on your lunch break. Think about it when you wake up in the morning. Think about it at the dinner table. Think about it before you go to bed. Think about it any chance you get during your day. And before long, I guarantee you, that verse or that passage or that phrase will become memorized, right? And so by meditating on God's word, we start to enjoy it. It starts to become a comfort to us. And then memorizing it is kind of natural. It just happens, right? We don't have to work on drilling it into our minds. Now, there are times where that's a good discipline to apply, but sometimes we can get discouraged and say, "I'm I'm just not good enough at memorizing. Not everyone has to be good at memorizing that way. Maybe we simply uh, meditate on scripture and that's how it makes it into our minds. But friends, whether you're meditating on it or, or memorizing it, I guarantee you as, as you fill your mind with scripture, it's going to affect your heart. It's going to affect how you pray. It's going to affect how you live. It's going to affect how you respond to disappointment or doubt or anger or fear, right? And so meditating and memorizing uh, God's word is important. That's an important discipline that we need. Like I said before, we're missing out if we're not doing that. So friends, Don Whitney says that every time you read your Bible, you should spend 50% of the time meditating on what you just read. So whether that's five minutes at the end of your lunch break or 50 minutes at the end of your day, try it. Take half of your time that you're reading your Bible and meditate on the words that you've just read. I guarantee you it's going to start moving from your mind and into your heart. And then it's going to change how you pray, how you live, how you act. And that's when we're not only spending time with the Lord, but we're training ourselves to think biblically. And that's when spiritual disciplines start having a huge impact on our lives. So friends, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to Catalyst Church, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook, so you can see more videos. Uh, And if you're interested, we're actually starting a community group based on spiritual disciplines. So if you'd like to encourage other believers as we grow in these in these practices, uh, then you you can find a link uh, in the description to sign up for that. Well, friends, next time we'll talk about uh, an easy tool uh, to grow in your prayer life. So I hope to see you then.